we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. You're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Happy New Month to you. If you are listening to me, if you are hearing the sound of my voice, it means that the grace of God is extended to you and that you made it into this new month. Happy New Month. Welcome to the Hebrew Month. It's my prayer that God Almighty will see us through and lead us until we enter the new year and beyond. Today we're talking about come out of her, my people. Come out of her, my people. Let us pray. Every time, Lord, it has been your will to feed us, to energize us, and to keep us alive in you. You sometimes pass us through your refining fire so that every dross, every death can be burned out. You save us, you prune us, so that you can make us bring out the best out of our lives and make the best use of every opportunity that is presented before us. Lord, this moment, let it be one of such opportunities that you will refine us with your fire. Speak your word to us, Lord. Energize us, prompt us to do what is right. In Jesus' name, amen. We're talking about come out of her, my people. Who is saying this? Who is this word going to? And who is her? Who is my people? Who is saying this? Who is her? As we move on today into this message, it's my prayer that God Almighty will give us divine illumination in Jesus' name. Let's look at the text for today. Revelation chapter 18, 1 to 8. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted and his, with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is falling, is falling, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye not be partaker of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sin have reached unto heaven, and God had remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she had filled, fill to her double. How much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she said in her heart, I sit a queen, and I'm no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall a plague come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord, God who judgeth her. Praise God. Today we are standing on a lamp, come out of her, my people. Who is her? the great harlot, the great whore, the deceiver, 
Revelation is written in codes in many places. There is a system of this world that the Lord wants us to come out of. He is not saying we should run out of the world because though we are in the world, we are not of this world. We cannot fly out of this world, but we are called upon to come out of the systems of this world, not to live our lives according to the pattern of this world, not to merge ourselves with and yoke ourselves with those in the world. There is a way that every child of God must live, and that is a call today. God has a nature. The nature of God is that whenever he is angry and he wants to carry out any form of destruction, he wants the righteous to stay away. He wants those who are righteous to get themselves out of the place he wants to judge. Let's remember the world that existed in the time of Noah, before God destroyed the world of Noah, the world in the time of Noah. He created a way of escape for Noah. He, he asked Noah to build an ark, and, now, and Noah did. He built an ark, and when the flood came, God preserved Noah. He did not just preserve Noah alone, but he preserved the animals. That was how the first world was consumed. When God judged Sodom and Gomorrah, he took Lot out of the city. Lot, his wife, and his two children, they were all saved. He warned them. He said, flee for your lives. Flee. Run as quickly as you can. Flee. Run. Because the cry of these people have come up to heaven. And it is time for God to judge this nation. The word of the Lord is coming to us again today. It is time to flee. Because this world we live in is coming, is heading for destruction. I know almost everybody is preaching. But it's like nobody is preaching because there is a famine of the word of God, farming of the truth. You tune the radio, you go to the internet, you go to the TV station, cable station, messages, even on CNN, people are preaching everywhere. But how many people are preaching the truth? You are a product of what you constantly feed yourself with. The world is becoming more and more immoral. Because people are being fed with garbage. People are being fed with sugar. People are being fed with the sugar-coded message. Not many people hear the truth. And so long as you continue to feed yourself with the wrong meal, I tell you the truth, you will never be healthy. That is why we live in a world that is sick today. Because instead of the watchman to tell the people that, listen, you have to come out of the system of this world. You have to get yourself ready because the owner of this world is angry, is coming down with judgment. Instead of the warnings, what we get is that the watchmen have gone out into the world and they have brought the world into the church. The church is so worldly to the extent that it is difficult to differentiate who is a believer and who is not a believer. That is a time we have come to live in today. But the word of God is here and amen. Escape for your life. Come out of her. Come out of the great deception. Come out of the falling away of the masses of the many. Come out of the this false church system. Come out of her, my people, if you want to be saved. If you want to escape the wrath of God, come out of her. If you do not come out of her, it is going to be very, very terrible. Let me tell you something. There are things that a lot of people do not yet understand. 
there are things that a lot of people are ignorant of. We are talking about a battle that started when we were not born. A kingdom split out of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of darkness emanated from the kingdom of light. Lucifer was in heaven and he was perfect before God until iniquity was found in him. And from the time that iniquity was found in him, he was thrown down to the earth and he vowed to make as many as possible his followers because he knows that his time is short. In Revelation chapter 12, he knows his time is very short and he's doing everything possible to win as many as possible to himself so that he will not be condemned alone. He knows he cannot repent. He knows he is judged already. So he's doing everything possible to make sure that he deceives the children of men. And you know what? Many children of men have deceived themselves. So it is no longer difficult for them to be deceived. Many of them have have this hardened heart. So when they meet with deception, they are happy because their ears have been programmed to listen to lies. When you hear some of these false doctrines people preach, you'll be wondering that what kind of listeners do these people have? But I tell you, they are so popular. They are everywhere. They are welcomed. But people like us, we are not welcomed. We are seen as the enemy of the people. As a matter of fact, a man was very angry with me because I said that one saved is not always saved. He said, I am distorting the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was furious and you could see the anger in him. He was very angry with me. He said, I am driving away sinners from the church. Let me tell you the truth. When the angels told Lot to leave, they were not serious. They were dragging their feet on the ground. As a matter of fact, he had to drag them out of the city. He threw them out of the city because it requires some level of force. That is how today we don't care about what people say anymore, but we do the best we can according to the grace of God upon our lives to pull some out of the fire of hell. Now it is becoming more and more difficult for believers to believe the truth. Why? Because the lie is so popular to the point that the truth is standing the test of doubt. People not doubt the truth. Because everybody is doing one thing. Everybody is doing one single thing. And you that is doing the right thing, you're asking yourself, am I sure I'm wrong? Am I sure I'm doing the right thing or I am wrong? But I tell you the truth. It was only eight people that God saved from the first world. Jesus Christ said, many are called, but few are chosen. Many will want to enter, but they will not be able to enter. Come out of her, my people. Let me tell you why you need to come out of her. Look at Revelation chapter 14, verse 1 and 19b and 19.3b. And the smoke of the atonement ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. 19 verse 3b. And a smoke rose up forever and ever. This is eternity. Some of you have ganged up with criminals. Some of you have ganged up with this condemned criminal. His own is finished. How can you befriend someone that has been declared condemned? 
Oh, because he has some good things to throw Abraham. Because he's given money. Because he has a system in place in this world. Oh, because he will no longer persecute you for a time. But the same one who will not persecute you now is the same one that is going to use these demons to torment you in hell forever. Sometimes in many prisons, when they want to destroy a criminal, when they want to destroy a prisoner, when they want to end his life, they tell him to make his last request. Some would say, I want the best, I want to eat my best meal before I leave. Some would say, I, I just want to have a day for myself. Let me think about my life. I don't want to eat. Some will say, I want to get baptized. The foolish ones will say, I want to eat my best meal. Because the journey is far. No, the journey is not far. One bullet will take you to your destination. There is a condemned criminal on earth. He is moving up and down, to and fro, looking for someone to devour. And a lot of people are following him because he has so many flashy things. Just like criminals make their last wish. So a lot of people have been given so many things. Oh, you are enjoying the benefits, the requests, the response to your last wish. Just as ritualists, they sacrifice some things. And they are told, let me tell you, this money you're going to have, you won't live long. You will live like three years and enjoy this world. They will say, yes, I just want to punish poverty. I agree. Give me the money. Give me the wealth. And let me go into the world and enjoy myself for three years. It's better to enjoy for three years and die young than enjoy, than live a hundred years and live with poverty. That is how a lot of our youths have been deceived. They are scamming people and engage in all sorts of atrocities in our nations. Because they believe that it is better to enjoy and die young than live long and die poor. And nobody wants to work hard again. Nobody. Wants to work hard. Everybody wants to scam. Everybody wants to steal. And you have many of these mega churches. Scamming people. Conniving with the enemy of God. The condemned criminal. To steal and deceive the children of God. Steal from God's children. And deceive people into hell. As a matter of fact. Even if you scream and tell people, come out of our my people. They look at you and tell you and ask you, what are you talking about? We are saved. We know we live in adultery. We, live, we know we are murderers. We know we are, we, we are drunkards. We know we, we, we are sort of evil people. But we are saved by faith and by faith alone. So, so long as we are saved forever. Stop screaming at our ear. Start screaming and shouting and telling us that we have to come out of anything. We are in Christ. And we are saved already. And we are forever saved. So stop shouting. I remember. Let me read for you. I remember Lot. Lot went to his two in-laws. And he told them, Listen, the God of heaven and earth, is going to destroy this city. Please hurry up. Let's go. The Bible says that they mocked him. Genesis chapter 19. 12 to 14 and verse 17. And the man said unto Lord. Have thou here any besides? Do you have anybody left? Son-in-law. And thy sons. And thy daughters. And 
whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spoke unto his sons in law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. And it came to pass, when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. Neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. It is very, 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 very clear that Sodom and Gomorrah was actually destroyed. The suffer is still there. The evidence is there that Sodom and Gomorrah was burnt to ashes, including the two sons of Lot. They argued, they said, no, he's not going to destroy us. He won't. They mocked him. This is a city that our parents built. We've been here for hundreds of years. How dare you tell us? that one God is going to destroy this city. Are you deceived? Are you deceived? How are you worshipping this God? Come out of her. Come out of her. My people, the fire of hell is too hot for you. You can't bear it. It wasn't made for you. Jesus Christ said it was made for the devil and his angels. These are supernatural beings. Angels that excel in might. Angels that can resist by their natural strength. Powerful demons. Powerful angels. Falling from glory. They committed crimes. Unfortunately, they are here. Escape. Escape, escape for your life. Unfortunately, people don't listen to someone who wants them and don't ask for anything. They just look for people who scam them. They just look for someone who will tell them what they want to hear. The Lord has sent me to warn a lot of people. Repent. If not, the Lord said, you will die. They don't repent. They don't. A few years ago, I warned a woman. The Lord said, tell her if she doesn't repent, she will die. She went about sowing seeds into the lives of men of God. But they never saved her. They were not able to save her. She died. They told her, don't mind Hosanna. Don't mind him. He's crazy. Don't mind him. But I knew whom I had. He said, warn her. If she doesn't change, if she doesn't repent, she will die. I remember one man, he was over 80 years. Some years ago, the Lord told me, go and warn him that he should change. Tell him, I don't know him. He was one of the first comers. Early morning, he comes to church. So I told him, I said, Papa, God said he doesn't know you. He said you should change, repent. He looked at me and started laughing. He said, how could God say he doesn't know me? How could he say that? Is this not the same God that saved me up to this age? Is it not the same God that when I don't have money, I cry to him and he supplies my need. How could you say he doesn't know me? Hmm. 
Not long, he died. Let me tell you, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the great God. Some of you haven't seen God angry before. You haven't heard his voice. He hasn't warned you. you, you some of you have, have no experience. You, have, you haven't encountered anything in life. You haven't disobeyed and reaped the consequences of disobedience. There is a saying in our local language that you don't tell a child who has been burnt with fire to flee from fire. There's a way our local parents, I mean traditional parents, raise us. When you're climbing, sometimes they keep quiet. They behave as if they are not seeing you. Sometimes when you are playing with fire, they keep quiet as if they are not seeing you because they know that even if they tell you, you're not going to listen. So they keep quiet. And when you fall or when the fire burns you, you warn yourself. So next time, when you see the fire, you flee. Some of you haven't actually encountered anything. Look at that rich man in hell. After he was in hell for a while, he said, no. We need to send someone who has experienced the torment of hell to these people. But we have the prophets there. We have the preachers. We have the evangelists. They are talking to your brothers over there. He said, no. The preachers will not present the message very well. We need someone from here. We need someone who has tasted this hell. Someone who has screamed. Someone who couldn't sleep for one month. But was just burning in hell. Just take someone who has this experience. And send that person to the world. And let that person just tell them what is so. I believe they will believe. God Send someone from hell. Send someone. Because these people are deaf. Their heart is dead. They don't hear. They are being poured into hell. Every second someone is always dying. And the millions of people that are dying, majority of them are going to hell. They don't even know. People are going from church to the fire of hell and they don't know. Imagine you being an, in, an, in an island and the only boat that's supposed to rescue the people, the rescue boat just left you and the volcano is coming and you are left alone. It is a fearful thing to fall into the end of the living God. Let me tell you, there is no amount of money or fame or power that will change my view. I've come a long way. I know what it is for God to be angry. And I know a little about God's anger. We are talking about the same God who brought the children of Israel out of Egypt and they provoked him. And he killed all of them except Joshua and Caleb. Every one of them that came out of Egypt perished in the wilderness. None of them survived except Joshua and Caleb. I mean, his beloved children because of disobedience. 
Isaiah chapter 52 verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean. And be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Be ye clean. Ye that call the name of God, depart from evil. Don't say because you believe, you will not depart. If you do the very things that made Jesus Christ to come and die, the very sin that brought him from heaven to the earth, and to the cross, and to the grave, if you specialize in the same acts, you have no place in the kingdom of God. Because after your repentance, having been delivered from the power of sin, you must live a holy life. You must bear the fruit of the Spirit. You must bear the fruit of repentance. Because the old man must be mortified with its deeds. The old man, the old self must be mortified and you must put on Christ. Is this your Christianity enough to rapture you? Are you in Christ enough? That is my question. Are you sure you are in him? Are you sure? Examine your life. Examine yourself. Because the trumpet shall sound. And the dead in Christ will rise first. And those of us who are in him, within twinkling of an eye, we will be transformed. And God will change our vile bodies. And we will put on angelic bodies. Mortality, we put on immortality and we will be transformed and we will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Let him who calls on the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. If you call the name of God, depart from evil. You who bear the vessel of the Lord, depart from evil. Come out of her. Come out of the system of this world. Let people mock you, it doesn't mean anything. Let people say whatsoever thing they want to say, it doesn't mean anything. What matters is that you are saved, and that is the joy of heaven. It's better for people to mock you. And heaven to rejoice that a soul had been saved. Than for the whole world to rejoice with you. And heaven is sad because a soul has been lost to eternal destruction. I used to be very happy when I go to church. I used to be a very good worshiper. I used to be happy. But now when I go to church, I cry. I weep because when you see the level of hypocrisy in church when you see people who are in the kingdoms of darkness and they are saying they are lifting up holy hands to worship God and you see people with their cleavages with tattoo all over their bodies not well dressed their bodies are radiating lust and they are proclaiming love for God with their lips I'm not judging people but by their fruits we shall know them when you see the level, the level of hypocrisy, those of you who don't see, you are blessed. You are blessed. You don't see. And you are blessed. You are blessed because you don't see. Just, if you can remain like that, better for you. <sighs> when you see a man of God who is a wizard, who is the head of his coven, Proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and telling people to change or preaching prosperity and giving people false hope. 
your happiness will disappear. You will start weeping for the church. The church of God had been hijacked by evil men, by criminals. Instead of it being the house of prayer, the house of worship, the house of fellowship, the house of meeting, meeting of God's people, and fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, it has become a den of robbers. A lot of you are rejoicing, but you are rejoicing to destruction. A lot of you are so happy. You are happy. I remember a vision I had some time ago. I saw people were worshipping God. They were so happy. They could see the kingdom of God. But unknowingly to them, there was a glass, a, a fence of glass. There was a glass fence in between them and the kingdom of God. They could see it. They were happy that they are already in the kingdom of God. But there, is, there was this glass wall separating them from the kingdom of God. A, a very high glass wall was separating them. That is the highest deception so far. And you know what? These words that we hear, if, if these words don't change us, they will torment us forever. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his soul? What shall it profit you as a believer? There are so many witches and wizards in church, so many wicked people in church. Many of them are in the children's department. They are spreading witchcraft, recruiting people for their kingdom. Yet they claim to be Christians. Some of them will come and say, Men of God, I pay my tithe, I do everything. Why is nothing moving? But are you out of that kingdom you go to every night? Have you broken that covenant? That covenant you had with the devil. And many of them are so, they are so religious. And they are so faithful in their physical worship. But they are even more and dangerously faithful to the secret kingdoms they belong. I, I heard a man of God. A church father who was saying that I was in school that time, he was saying, It doesn't matter who you are, even if you are a witch, even if you are a wizard, the Lord has accepted you. Come and take this holy communion. <laughs> are you aware that? Some people know that even though they are preachers, they are not entering the kingdom. Are you aware that there is a cult that many of these top men of God have been initiated? Are you aware? I'm not saying all, I mean many of them. Are you aware? That tells you how hard, how narrow the kingdom path is. It is full of many dangers. I remember I went before a man of God some time ago, early 2000, to tell him some of the dreams I was having. And he booked an appointment for me. I went to visit him in his house. Instead of me to tell him what took me there, I was telling him other things. And he stopped me. He said, okay, 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 let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. After I left, I was asking myself, what have I just done? This is someone I met. I told him my dreams. And he said, oh, 
Oh boy, you need to see me. Meet me in the office or meet me in my house. I need to pray with you and counsel you. You are anointed. I said, why did I not tell him why I went there? It was like something came over me and I couldn't even open up to him that, oh, daddy, uh, you actually booked an appointment for me on because of this reason. I told you this dream. I couldn't tell him. I couldn't repeat the dream. Some years later, the Lord revealed to me that the one I went to is a wizard. That it was the Holy Spirit who stopped me from telling him those things. If not, he would have fucked me. But this is someone a lot of people look up to in the church. But in the dark, it's one of them. If you are one or such, come out of her. For the torment shall be too great. God is going to judge this world. He will judge every single human being in this world. Second Corinthians chapter 6, 14 to 17. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion had light with darkness? And what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believeth with an infidel. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate say the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Come out of anything that aligns you with the devil. Come out of every kingdom that is not of God. Come out of everything that is unclean. Come out of everything that will bring condemnation to you. Because hell wasn't prepared for human beings. Danger is coming. War is coming. This is not a nu nuclear war. This is not a war between humans and humans. It is going to be war between heaven and the kingdom of darkness. Pick your sides now. There is nothing like ignorance. Everybody must take a side. Either consciously or unconsciously. Everybody has already taken a side. But what the Lord is saying to us is that choose life and live. Choose life that you may live. Don't take side with the devil. Don't take side with his fallen angels. Don't take side with the false prophets in this world who are turning the church upside down. Don't take side with them. Finally, let us read Matthew chapter 25, verse 41 and Mark 9, 44. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Did you hear that? It was prepared for the devil and his angels. But he said the human beings there. Why? Because they refused to come out of her. Mark 9, 44. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Would you want to go to a place like that? Then why are you with that condemned criminal? Do you want to be in the place of torment forever? But let me tell you, there is another place you can choose to go. It is a place of bliss. It's a place where God himself dwells. It's a place of the saints where there is joy and rejoicing. Why don't you just enjoy this hardship and reap eternal life? 
Why don't you just hold on? Everybody is mocking you. You have no child. Everybody is mocking you. You are barren. You are sterile. You have no money. People mock you. But why don't you comfort yourself in the words of the Lord that this world is not our home? That is going to prepare a place for us. Why are you jealous of evil people? And you are turning side. You're turning your head to the other side. And about looking back, or you're already looking back. Why? Why do you want to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a moment and receive eternal condemnation? We are just passing through. We are sojourners. Our home is in heaven. The new Jerusalem. That is a place that is prepared for us. Why don't you just hold on? Do you want to give your life to Jesus Christ? Do you want to reconcile with him? Do you have anything you need to come out of? Let me pray with you. Father, help this your children. Help as many as want to give their lives to you. Help those who have been lost, but are now found and are reconciling themselves back to you. Holy Father, help your people. May the Lord God Almighty forgive you your sins. Forgive you and accept you back to himself. May the blood of Jesus wash you and cleanse you. May the Lord forgive you your past, give you the grace to accept him and follow him all the days of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus, whatsoever thing that can pull you back to the world, receive grace to overcome it. O Lord, help these ones. In Jesus' name, if there be anything in your life that is not of God, that is capable of destroying your faith or cause you to backslide. May the Lord God Almighty take away that thing. Lord, step into the situations of your children. I command everything that is not of God in your life to disappear. Every sickness, every dryness, financial difficulties, joblessness, every sorrow, I banish them from your life forever in the name of Jesus. Receive strength to run this race. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. We worship you, Lord. I pray for you, those of you who have been supporting our ministries. May the Lord God Almighty help you. Those of you who have been supporting our charity organization, may the Lord help you. Receive more. Receive more. May the windows of heaven be open for you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you build a wall of fire around these your children. May no evil come upon you. May your children be safe. May your job be safe. May everything that concerns you be safe. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kindly subscribe to this channel if you have not done so and also please share this video with someone and also recommend this ministry to someone and the good lord will bless you abundantly in jesus name those of you who have been supporting us thank you very much schools will be resuming next week next week school will resume please if you want to pick up one or two children to take care of to cater for their school fees i'll be glad there are there are so many children on our streets now especially because of the economic meltdown if you want to adopt anyone i'm not saying adopt anyone as a child but if you want to adopt anyone to take care of their school fees or even take care of them you're very much free to do so Please kindly support us to 
reach out to those in need. And the good Lord will bless you. I appreciate those of you who have been supporting us. May the Lord God Almighty continue to strengthen you so that you can do more. God bless you. Please don't give up. We have a home in heaven. It's my prayer. My best prayer for you is that the Lord will keep you so that you will reap your rewards in heaven. Even in this world, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. See you next time. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.